NMF TV. Silence your radio, kill your television. NMFTV.com. Pass it to my boys, Chuck Hollow and Polo. Real heads listening, not just in the intros. Knowledge of the realness, y'all should really feel this. Always down the ball, hard on y'all's witness. This here is really for the real thing. For those who've never really been bandwagon fans, listen to the real talk straight up from the stands. <laughs> Still have to ask you about yeah, the yeah. episode title until the end. What's up, guys? This is episode 8 of From the Stands. I have noticed that we are a two-man crew. Big time na kasi kasama na. Hindi, pare. Bago pa yan, oh. we went to Barakay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, you know what? We went to Barakay. We had a fun time there. Si Carlo, ano pa siya nun eh? Parang, I'll, I'll just catch up with yeah. you guys. But, Hindi nga eh. I'll, I'll go to Boracay when I win this challenge. Yeah, exactly. That's what he said. But now, kasi, ngayon, he, 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 when, when Pure Foods lost to, to, to Talk and Text on Saturday, he's yeah. like, you know what, you guys, to stay behind in Manila. Yeah. I'll fly to Boracay. I need some time alone. Yep. Di ba siya sanay kasi? Sinamahan niya yung mga studyante dun sa Boracay. <laughs> Maglilip, magdire-diretso na lang siya ng mga Boracay siguro. What's up, guys? Uh, this is uh, my, my main man, Paul Basamante. What's up? My name is Chuck Araneta, and we are here to break down what is going to be a fantastic, a extremely exciting Commissioner's Cup Finals between the Rain or Shine, Elasto Painters, and the Talk and Text, Tropang Texters? Okay, gusto ko lang this i-point is gonna out. This is going to be a fun lang series. I-point out na medyo underrated tong, um finals na to in the sense na walang SMC team, number one. This is the first... In, like, first time in a long, in like yeah. three... No, uh, four... In like two years. F- yeah, yeah. Two years. Oh, in like oh. two years na walang... Rain or Shine, uh, na walang SMC team. And, no, you think, know what's crazy? What's hmm. crazy? This is the first time since Talk versus Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nung Governors. Yeah, afterwards, yeah. It's, it's either been Hinebra or Petrol yeah, yeah, yeah. or San Miguel or Pure Foods. So, diba? parang sa akin, it's a breath of fresh air. Um, it's good that the league gets to watch two teams that aren't always in the finals, but have always been competing hard enough to make it to that level. So, uh, I'm excited for this series, and we were checking out the numbers. It's gonna be a good one. Yep, yep. So, uh, what we're gonna do right now for for this for the first half of the show, we'll br- we'll break down some of the really key matchups. Um, whether it's the, we'll also take a look at the imp- um the the bench, some yeah. of the young guns of the team, the coaches, and basically, and yet at the end, we're going to give you our predictions, which we are sure are going to be completely yeah. wrong. At the end of this Yeah, because you know, I dropped a hell of a lot of stats last week. Yep. None of that mattered to Jason yeah, Castro, apparently. Your, your argument was the most based on uh, sound fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it fell. It by fell. the way, Totally, dis- totally destroyed. And mine was all completely, uh, you know, heart, puso, hunger. Yeah. It made sense. <laughs> made sense. <laughs> it made sense. <laughs> Pasok pala siya. Di ba? Okay, so the first um, topic we wanted to talk about. Let, let's talk about their first meeting muna. Do we have to? I think so. Like... To the both imports. Oh, yeah, okay. Let, let's, okay. Let's look at that. No? Let's Baka check out some highlights ma- from the first. Ano? Ma- makita dyan. This is the first game bala of, 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 uh, of, uh, of both teams versus Rain yeah. Shine. I mean, you have to remember that both teams were still getting used to their imports. Um, both teams had different imports. Yeah, there was still a lot of getting to know you. So a lot of the plays really are just simple like post ups yeah. and then. It was Rick Jackson for versus, Rain yeah, Shine versus, versus, versus Richard, Richard Howell. Richard Howell. Yeah. And the reason lang why I said na, you know, is this still valid? Is because parang, it, it, it's completely different. Um, yeah. It's the first game, there's still not a lot of pressure because both sides are still trying to feel um, each other out. Yeah. Uh, try, they're trying to feel out their teams and their chemistry. But I guess if there's one thing that we can garner or we can take a look at, you know, looking at these stats is that Ross is going to make this a fast-paced game. They will. They They're going will. to try to really make this a fast-paced game. Um, majority of the highlights are actually very contrasting. Yeah. It's, it's, for Ross, it's a lot of um, run and gun. Yeah. Oh, shout out to run, run and, and gun. gun. Shout out to Hinebra. Um, That's a system. Yeah, it's a lot of you know trying to get the ball up and down the court. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, for talking text, it's half-court sets. Yeah. Uh, I think the key here is as different as these two teams were when they first met, the, the key point that you can watch out for, especially for Rain or Shine, is how they still speed up the game as much mm. as possible. And later, when we go into detail with Rain or Shine, you, we'll, we'll try to break down how this fast-paced attack gets them 
their offense, how it really works out for them, and how the half court set, especially revolving around Jason Castro, has been the main point of attack for uh, Talking Text naman on the flip side. Sure. All right. Okay. Thanks, Pico. Yeah, I think that's good enough, Pico. Salamat. Uh, so, okay, let, let's talk first about the, the juiciest. The, the meatiest uh, matchup um, of, this, of, this, uh, of this final series. It's between, I, I would say, um, inarguably, the, the best two players of this Commissioner's Cup. Clearly. It's between Paul Clearly. Lee and uh, Jason Castro. Yeah. And this is a matchup that if you're, if you're a guard uh, or if you're a small man, you're, you're hyped for. Because in, in, a, in, a, in a conference with, with imports, in a conference in a with... In a conference with 6'9", yeah, and, and above, 7'4", yeah, imports. You yeah. have two players under six feet who are battling um, not just for a championship, but for the rights to be, you know, be declared the best player yeah. of this conference. I mean, obviously, that, that's, that's, not, that's not what they want. Like, yeah. they want to win a championship. But this could actually more or less um, show us kung who's really deserving to be the best player of the conference. Actually, um, the thing there is, game two na malamang i-award yung best player of the conference. So, I mean, the winner of game one... Does it, it, it doesn't mean so much. But if you look at their body of work throughout the entire season, you can see two superstars that are emerging. Talaga. Um, you have on one side Jason Castro, who's coming out of stepping out of the shadows of Jimmy Alapag. And you know, this is the first time in in his entire career that he's actually the team is actually his. Yep. Um, I mean, a lot of times before we kept on acknowledging the fact that Jason Castro is. Uh, Tokentek's most talented player, but it was never really his team. It was always Jimmy Alapag's team. But this this year, and most especially this conference wherein they made the finals, we can now really say and we can now really claim that this is uh, this is um, Jason Castro's team, completely his team. Yeah. Yep. On the other side, naman you have Paul Lee. Um, in a system na superstarless, like uh, Rain or Shine. You have someone like Polly who demanded for max money. There was a there's a, remember the contract struggle that Polly yep. had with Rainer Shine. Yep. Eventually resigned and Rainer Shine gave him the max money that he deserves. And this conference he's showing why. Against Meralco, he just totally blitzed them, was bombing them from everywhere, was a bowling ball on offense, unstoppable when attacking the rim. So Polly, in a superstarless system, has emerged as Rainer Shine's go-to guy. Okay, um, stats of Pauli in the playoffs versus Meralco, uh, it's pretty good. In 27 minutes, he averaged 17.3 points. Um, two, two out of four, 0.8 for 42% from three. Uh, he, he gave you um, like close to, close to seven rebounds a game, four assists. So uh, around 17, seven, four with 40, yep, he, 42%. Yep, he did everything. Uh, with the PER of 21.3, um, usage rate of 28. Through, through TS percent of sixty one point eight, um, this guy is really good. And, and you and you have and you you might want to compare like the raw stats of Castro and Lee. But the key here is that Paul Lee is doing everything in twenty six minutes. That's not even like thirty minutes a game. To be able to average like seventeen four and four in like twenty six minutes in a coach Yang Yao system. Twenty six minutes. Twenty six minutes a game. That, that's really impressive. Yeah. And the thing, the thing about, uh, about uh, Rain or Shine, if I'm not mistaken, in the finals, is that Coach Yang um, will, will, ano eh, will, will tighten his rotations if needed be in the finals. And if Pauli gets it going, and he's shown that he's not afraid of the big stage. Uh, he's not afraid to, to do battle with, with pure foods like in last, uh, last season. This is a guy who is going to really stamp his, his class on the series. And that's, that's, that's something, that, um, is something that we can't take for granted. Paul Lee is going to make you defend him. Yeah. You know, there, there are times, because with Paul Lee, he can be passive. Mm. And not, not because um, you know, he's, he's deferring, but it's really because of, okay, uh, Jeff Chan is, is, the, is the hot hand right now, yeah. or is he Aranya? So he's gonna, you know, okay, I'll, I'll pick my spots. I wouldn't be surprised for Pauli to just go out and get it versus Talking Text. Because this is a proud guy. Oh, I, I, I disagree with you in the sense that Pauli, yeah, Pauli is a superstar, Pauli is a proud guy. But I feel that Pauli is best used for 
spurts to close out the other team or spurts to come back into the game. Okay. And that's 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 Paulie's greatest asset. Yeah. I mean, we've seen especially like with uh game 3 of the finals, we've seen Ryan Aranya start out hot mm. and then you know, continue to feed him the ball. Sometimes it's Wayne Chisholm, sometimes it's uh Gabe Norwood, other times it might be one of the extra rice guys. And you know, Yang Yao has not been afraid to keep on going into yeah. that well until it's empty. Si Paul Lee kasi is, an em- is a well that will never run out. So you can go to him at any time. And mm. that's, I feel that that's the biggest asset or that's the biggest weapon that Rainer Shine has. In Paul Lee is, I mean, averaging what, 26 minutes a game? So he's yep. rested. He's yep. not as tired. Oh, he's really fresh. Exactly. He's really, fresh. he's really fresh. So besides rust, which is a major concern, Paul Lee can actually be plugged and played at any time, any time Yang Yao needs him to go to go hard for Rainer Shine. Plus, um, for the for the long for uh, he's, he's actually injury free, uh, yeah, which yeah, hasn't yeah. happened in, long, in a long time. time. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Paul, Paul Lee, whatever role um, he's gonna be put in, I'm sure he's gonna excel. Let's but, look at no. Let's look at uh, Jason Castro's stats because um, wait, before the stats, can we show a masterpiece in three point shooting by Jason let's Castro? Do it. Let's just count how many defenders One. were on his back. Look at One, all the space. Two. I'm just gonna add that all over. I, I, I Mark can't Pingris believe Mark Pingris defend. gave him that much space. No, though. Mark Pingris said, "Cause if, if you're defending, if you're defending Jason Castro, mm. like the the play to defend him, you you basically can't. But mm. you just have to live and die with the three. Yeah." Because parang you can live with him. I mean, you can't live with him. Obviously, Pierre Woods died, but. But you'd, you'd rather, rather you'd, you'd rather, rather have him pull up for a three, and if you're Mark Ping, you just try to defend him as much as you can. The problem is, is that you kind of have to mix up your coverage on Jason Castro. And what? And if you're looking at the at the at the video, um, that's not something that Pierre yeah. Puig did. They just outright straight straight, straight, straight yeah, up straight played. gave him the three. Walang ball denial, yep. walang double uh, team. I think the important thing about Jason Castro coming into him, like going back to him being an emerging superstar, is he built his game on attacking the basket. Yeah. That's what he was known for. And he was, he's one of the most lethal players attacking the basket. And because of that, the three point shot is coming to him easier. Eh? If you watch the clip, if you watch a clip again, you'll see Mark Pingres or Joe Devans being off balance. Yeah, you can, you can actually. You can, uh, What's you going to do? Exactly. What's you, what you going to do? Hindi mo alam yung oh, hindi mo alam oh, kung oh, ano Like Jason oh. Castro can go left, can go right, can go straight at you. And he keeps the defenders off balance long enough for him to launch a three-point shot. And you know, a player like Jason Castro given that much space, given that much time to shoot a three, he's going he's more more or less going to make it. And here's the thing. Okay, I'll show you Jason uh, Castro's stats um in for the playoffs, uh, in 34 minutes. 23.6 points per game, um, 4, 4.4 out of 7.4 from 3, that's 60%. 60% from 3. Yeah, um, he didn't go to the line. This is a red flag. Um, and he averaged, here's the key stat, he averaged, while doing all of this, 6.2 assists. He still ran the offense. He, he still ran the offense for a PER of 33.3. <laughs> 30. Again, small sample size alert, it's only 5 games, but for you to be able to do that, at a PR of 33 and a true shooting percentage of 73.5. My God. Okay, here's the question I have for you about Jason Castro. Um, is this space sustainable for him? Is this something that, that he, you can actually... Well, I mean, Jason Castro is not human. He's not playing uh, um, you know, like, like, like regular men, like regular mortals right now. Mm. But shooting... 59% from three, averaging 23 and six assists. I mean, is that too much to expect on a consistent basis or at least for five more games here in this Commissioner's Cup Finals? You know, the thing, the thing with Jason Castro, and, and I said this, he's found a way to balance all of his offensive weapons. Na hmm. The drive, the jumper, even the mid-range jumper, and dishing out, he's found a way to balance it. So if you're telling me, does Jason Castro need to average 23.6 assists on 60% three-point shooting? No, he doesn't. But what he does need to do is on the days that his team needs him to score, or even on the possessions that his team needs him to score, he has to be able to attack the basket or 
you know, get his defender off balance to hit the three. On the times that he's doubled, he has to be able to find the open man. Hmm. I mean, Jason Castro has to be literally what his team needs him to be. Hmm. I mean, uh, if we're talking about balance, I feel that Rain or Shine is a very top-heavy team in the sense that Jason Castro... You mean talking text? I'm sorry, talking text. Jason Castro... Ivan Johnson, Rene Del De Ocampo, Matt Ganuelas, Rosser. Then whatever Alas. you can get from... And then whatever you yeah. can get from everyone sure, else. Sure, sure, sure. So, that's why, I need, that's why Jason Castro needs to produce whatever his team needs. If it's assist, it's assist. If it's scoring, it's scoring. So, I, I feel that... Yun lang yung hirap kay Jason Castro um, compared to someone like Polly. Polly kasi, his team was created as balanced as possible. Yung mm. kay Jason Castro, it's a superstar team that needs him to be able to run the entire um, the entire offense of that team. Okay, um, for for talking text, uh, if you look at the if you look at the re- the, the, the the video of um, Jason Castro making all those threes, um, it was actually just a lot of walk walk on threes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Diba? Um, there were some pick and rolls between him and uh, and, and Ivan Johnson, Johnson, but for the most part. Pure Foods was just daring him to shoot. Now, I'm sure Rainer, Rainer Shine and Coach Yang was taking note of that. And yeah. I'm sure they're not just going to leave uh, whatever Gabe Norwood versus um, Jason Castro on an island. Yeah. They're going to try to send help. And I guess that's where it comes and you were saying that the other people are going to be tested yeah. in the series. Because we know that RDO is going to contribute. But what about Larry von Scher, who's who's who's... Who's just been stuck in a, in, a, in a hole right now and you know no one knows where his game went or this is where you miss Ryan Reyes yeah this is where Kevin Alas is going to be tested we're going to talk about him later diba? but or even Jimmy Alapag yeah sure that's where they're going to miss Jimmy Alapag um you know, I, I feel like for for Rainer Shine um they need to be more like what you said they need to be more than Jason Castro because this is a Ross which is going to be which is going to be very physical which is going to throw different defenders at at uh, at Token Text and it's going to be a challenge for um, Castro's teammates to be able to uh, to pick up the slack. Oh, let's get down to it. Who's your BPC? Wow, I was not prepared. My stats ka na, na napag-usapan na natin. That's the only question remaining, really. Okay, um, it's it's Jason Castro for me. But here's the thing, I th- <laughs> I, I, I think I, I do think it's unfair for us to be penalizing Polly. Um, for playing less games than Jason Castro, because to a certain extent, that's that's how you can know That's how you can earn more statistical points. Eh? Sure, see, sure. si, see, si, uh, maybe Ross, uh, maybe Polly got some bonus from, you know, from uh, winning earlier versus Meralco. But but we saw Polly have these 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 um, uh, ga- these godlike games um, because it was stretched to a fourth game while. Rainer Shine handled their business in uh, in three. Yeah. Diba? So, yeah, it's Jason Castro. I mean, even if it was just game by game, it's Jason Castro. But I think that we need to also give a lot more props to Paul Lee. Oh, yeah. You know, because of what he's been able to do this oh, yeah. conference. Um, Ikaw. Okay. okay. First of all, no offense to Meralco. But Paul Lee was playing against a Meralco team that really did not have a interior presence yeah. and even lost their import in the final game. Yeah. So, uh, Polly played great. You can't take that away from him. But Meralco isn't exactly in the same caliber as Pure Foods. And your tweet, which I found really interesting, the yung, um, Jason Castro destroying the system. Yeah, he broke the system. Um, it was an interesting tweet because this is Pure Foods. Eh? Um, it's a team that we're so we're, we're so used to to seeing winning mm. na parang any odds that that are stacked against them feeling natin mananalo sila and Jason Castro had that kind of moment had mm. that kind of game breaking game changing moment that i mean voters of the BPC will even even they're not going to yeah, forget they're about they're not going to forget game. about that yeah oh, yun, oh, yun, yun. and i think Jason Castro left a mark so strong so mm. lasting that um, he basically won the BPC when they eliminated Pure Foods. So it's not ano, Calvin Abueva? Nope. <laughs> Nor is it Greg Slaughter. <laughs> Nor is it Junmar Fajardo. Yeah. They're yeah. all chilling in bar It's, it's right really now. going to be between Fajardo and Castro for the rest of their, their careers, right? Unless yeah. like Slaughter comes in. And, you know. Okay, I have a question for you. Oh. If you had to 
right now, right at this moment lang. Do you think that Castro, if if they win a championship, has done enough to leapfrog June Marfajardo for MVP of this entire of this entire season? Or are you still giving it to June Marfajardo? Carlo and I keep on talking that because SMB was eliminated so early, that this is Jason Castro's best chance uh, to win the MVP. So because Sir Talk made it to the semis, Talk made semis it, or quarter. Anyway, yeah. Talk made it further than yeah, SMB sure. for the past two conferences now, and unless Talk poops the poops the uh, poops in the third conference and um, Junmar wins that. another uh, another BPC. BPC or another championship, then. June Mar gets the MVP, but right now at this moment, Jason Castro, this is Jason Castro's best chance to win the MVP. So if he continues his solid play and talk makes it to the semis at least of next conference, then he's in strong contention for the MVP. But it's still June Mar Farado. Yeah, I, I still give heavier weight, especially to all to, Filipino. To all Filipino. Yeah, that's that's that, that's fair. Okay, um, the next um, matchup or storyline we wanted to let's go through this one very quickly. Um, it would not, um, it would be the the yeah. the Jedi versus the Paduan. Yeah. Gabe Norwood versus um, Matt Ganuelas Ross. Yeah. This is going to be a fun matchup that uh, no one will be able to see because they won't be defending each other. Yep. Exactly. They're not going to be, defending, going to each be defending each other. Diba? Gabe Norwood will definitely and for sure be used majority on Jason yep. Castro because if you're talking about athleticism and speed and length enough to guard Jason Castro. That's, that's Gabe Norwood. I mean, Jair is going to switch. Aranya is going to be on him a bit. You might see some, some of the smaller guards of uh, Jericho Cruz, um, Chris Chu defending Jason Castro. But majority of the time, Gabe Norwood will be defending Jason Castro. Same goes with Matt Ganuelas roster. Gabe Norwood is my main man. Yeah. Like he's one of the nicest guys. Are you an MGR guy? I'm an MGR guy. Wow! Don't judge me. This yeah. is just my opinion. But I think that when all is said and done, I think Ganuelas Rosser is going to end up having a better career than Gabe Norwood. <laughs> I am so... Wow! I am so... Wow! I am, I am sold on, on Matt Ganuelas Rosser. Wow! I'm, I, this guy, this kid, man. This... Okay, okay, let us No, he's just really, really good. Like, he's really, really good. Um... And the thing I love about Ganuelas Rosser that I don't see yet, I don't, that Gabe Norb doesn't have, it's his fearlessness in driving to the basket. Because see, Ganuelas Rosser is actively looking for contact. But with Norwood, he's so athletic, athletic he's so, so slippery. So smooth, yeah. Kaya niya iwasan yung yeah, yeah, defense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, Luis Scola wasn't able to yeah. get out. Umiwa si Luis Scola. Umiwa si Scola. <laughs> but... Ganuelas Rosser, I, I, what, what I love about this guy is um, he's still raw. He still doesn't have an outside shot. Norwood still has him there. But the willingness niya to, to be a point forward and to be able to drive to the basket, I, Ganuelas Rosser is really, really good. Ako, I, I, I'm not going to pick sides here, but I think that this is the matchup that dictates the series. Eh? Whoever, wow. whoever plays better between Gabe Norwood or Matt Ganuelas Rosser, will be the one to swing the series. Because if Gabe Norwood can defend uh, Jason Castro and still produce on the offensive end, then that definitely is a big boost for a team-oriented rain or shine. Now, on the other side, like I said, sobrang superstar-laden ng Token Tex that they need, all the, they need all the production that they can. And if Ganuelas Rosser can capably stop Paul Lee, and I think Ganuelas Rosser has the strength to be able to defend a driving Paul Lee and still provide, you know, the chip offense, yung mga fast break shots niya, fast break layups and, you know, attacking the basket relatively uh, continuously, I mean, then, you know, it's gonna be an interesting series but yun yung, yun yung key matchup for me in this entire series. So, Ganuelas, uh, Gabe Norwood stats, mm. um, he's averaging seven points a game. Uh, seven points and like um, four rebounds and two assists. Oh. Um, his, his his PER right now is I'm just just for the entire season, ah, mm. it is at fifteen point two. Okay. Matt Ganuelas Rosser is averaging eleven points a game. Wow. He's averaging almost four rebounds, uh, two assists, um, and his PER is at. Is that 15? Uh, sorry, it's at 
uh, 18. I'm surprised that Ganuelas Rosser is averaging that much points. Diba? Parang it's Interesting, ang, ang quiet ng production ni Ganuelas Rosser. Hmm. But that's the thing about, about Ganuelas Rosser. He's doing all of this. He's a rookie. He's playing in this stacked um, talk and text um, lineup. But he's basically become indispensable to, co- to coach Jong Chico. Yeah. I, I really like Ganuelas Rosser. Yeah. But I, I, you know, Gabe Norwood, he's a national treasure. He's a national hero. But Ganuelas Rosser is coming for him, man. He's, I just think, I, I think Gabe Norwood's better defensively. And I think Gabe Norwood also has a bigger, a bigger defensive battle up against him than Matt Ganuelas Rosser. Okay. Uh, one, last, one last note, ah. Huh? Ah. Defensive rating of um, Gabe Norwood in the playoffs is 95.8. Mm. For Ganuelas Rosser, it's 99.6. So in that aspect, you're right. Norwood has a better defensive rating. Yeah. Right now, he's a better defender. Yeah. But, but Ganuelas Rosser is also six years younger. Yeah. And those legs are going to yeah. uh, fresh. But for this matchup yeah. itself. Sure. Okay. Um, next is let's look at let's look at some of the the the, the, the potential X factors. Yeah. Um, you have Kevin Alas. And uh, who we talked about, Naganuelas Rosser. You can maybe even throw in Jay Wash there. Um, versus Raymond Almazan, Jericho Cruz. These are all potential impact players. Like the players. platoon players. But I, Who's I, one player? Oh, Kevin Alas. Kevin Alas for talking. Kevin Alas. Uh, I think Kevin Alas will be the one to spell the rest for Jason Castro. So if he can provide a certain level of production na hindi ganun kalayo sa slip uh, hindi hindi masyado magsislip off from whatever Jason Castro provides and I Kevin Alas will be uh, a key for talk and text but he can actually be and this is a bad comparison but he can play a Jimmy Alpago yeah, yeah, yeah. Diba? they can't even look the same right now yeah yeah diba? I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. take give or take ano, but like Kevin, 50 Alas, tattoos. Kevin Alas has shown crazy amounts of fearlessness at the basket you. That, that floater of his I told you is money I told you do not sleep on Kevin Alas. Yeah, not anymore. Uh, that guy is really good. Yeah. Um, and they, they, they pay the price to get him. Yeah. They Can did. you imagine Kevin Alas was still in Rainer Shine? Like, would... Think about Alas would be able to have this much growth if he was, uh, you know, in, no. in Rainer Shine. No, right? the way Rainer Shine... He'd be playing behind so many yeah, guards, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. And, and the fact there is, limited by minutes. Niya. Ito... They can play together. Jason Castro and Kevin Las can play together, yeah. and it'd be an interesting matchup. You know, kung purely offense lang titingnan, that's gonna be an interesting matchup or an interesting lineup guard guard lineup for Tonto. Yeah, if, if if Alas was in Rain or Shine, he'd probably be like Jarek Teng. Yeah, like Jarek Teng. I'm I I still am not out on Jarek Teng. I still think na if slash when he goes to Global Park to play under Pido. Dun lalabas yung laro. Dun, dun uh, laro niya. But I mean, if you're not if you're not a prodigious talent like like Raymond Almazan or someone who they desperately need to contribute right away, may pila yan eh sa sa mga guards ng But see, Rainer Shine. If if you're talking about <laughs> X Factor on Rainer Shine naman, Jericho Cruz. Jericho Cruz. Jericho Cruz just busted out. This guy didn't care about the 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 pila that you're mm. talking about. I mm. mean, there, there's Chris Chu, there's uh, Jeff Chan. Uyloan might even be ahead of the ano, but Jericho Cruz just continued to prove na hey I'm here to produce I'm here to play and the way he was playing fearless for Adamson attacking the basket hitting threes he was playing l- like the number one option. Eto in Rain or Shine, wala siyang taot na ako yung number one option pag ako yung nasa floor. Mm. So uh, the, for me Rain or Shine's X factor is Jericho Cruz. I was completely wrong about Jericho Cruz. <laughs> Like I, I thought he was gonna be, I thought he was gonna be okay. Yeah. Like I, I thought he was going to be. Oh, it's another Alex Nuiles clone. But um, Jericho Cruz is. Uh, it's another Alex Nuiles clone. No, you know, yalam mo yun. Yung mga yeah, 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 mold, yeah, yeah. he's another Yang Yang Ronald Wing. Pascual Ma, yeah, yung kind mga, of player. Yeah. players. But but Jericho Cruz, the, the one thing I, I like about him is he has controlled insanity. Hindi siya parang Alex Nuiles na parang one speed lang to the mm-hmm. basket. Like, Nuiles will, he's a better dib- dribbler, he'll give some hesitation, he can shoot from outside. He's, he's just a fun player to, to watch. Yeah. And it's something that, like, if you have a Jericho Cruz on your bench, you have to give this kid minutes. Another, another player that, um, that uh, Coach Yang has been giving a lot of minutes to is Raymond Almazan. Yeah. Almazan 
it, itong si Almazan, when when uh, when they were talking about at the start of the season, parang they they needed a big, or they needed to they needed to acquire big um, para matrade nila si Poli. The back of my mind, I was thinking, why are you trying to get another big when Almazan is there? And sure enough, I mean, Almazan is going to be like long term one of the one of the key players for for uh, for Rainer Shine, and it, it's it's. It, it's fun to see him grow. It's fun to see what he can contribute. Um, you know, he's just, and he has a three-point shot right now. Yeah. Oh, oh, Raymond Almazan's been solid in the production that he provides in the front court, especially with Jervy Cruz and Bo Belga and J.R. Kenyan being inconsistent. If Raymond Almazan can continue to give 10.7 boards consistently for Rain or Shine, yeah. that's going to be invaluable going into the finals, especially since... It'll, Raymond Almazan will have to make guys like Ivan Johnson, Rani Del de Ocampo, Jay Washington work on defense. And sure. that's important <laughs> yep. for a team offensive with offensive firepower like Dante. Okay. Um, last last um, matchup actually would be the coaches. It would be between Jong Oichiko and um, Yang Yao. These guys um, have not... Uh, when when, when uh, talk swept um, uh, Rain or Shine in 2012? Yeah, 2020, no, 2013... That was still Norman Black. No, sorry, 2012. That was still Norman Black versus Yang Yao. Yeah. This time it's Jongwei Chico. If you're talking about experience, these guys have, have seen it all. They're, they're basically the same in terms yeah. of experience. Multiple championship with different teams, national team coaches, coaching stint. So, parang, you know, um, in terms of experience, it's a wash. You're basically it's talking a about it's, it's a J-wash. <laughs> talking about the same thing. Yeah. Um, which style do you like more? Which, which style... It's a better, kumaga, it, it's, it's better against which team? Like, for example, is the spread out um, pick and roll of, of Ross um, a better, like, like uh, is, is it harder for talk to defend? On the flip side, is, is some talk and texts just will beat you with whoever we choose to match up, you know, harder yeah, to yeah. defend for us? Sang, oh, sang, sang I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with Rain or Shine. Because um, it's gun. I have a thing for Ron and Gun. Clearly, you do. Uh, I, I just want to show you how Rain or Shine beat. Meralco um, in the semifinal. So, Pico, just, these are just some clips. So, you can see that Rain or Shine consistently running and running and running, trying to pushes get the back. basket. They, yep. they really try. Look at this. Before makaset man lang yung defense ng Meralco, they're already firing up a three point shot. Those so, are nice jerseys too. Right? Yung red, ganda, yeah. diba? And you have guys like Polly able to do, Ooh. you know. Poly break stuff. yeah, poly stuff break down the guys. But really, look at it. Look at all these clips. It's continuous running. Even the import of Rain or Shine has gotten into the act of running. So it's just that kind of game, that kind of pace, and that kind of system of Rain or Shine that makes it uh, an interesting choice for me because mm. they like to set up their offense before the opposing team can actually set up their mm. defense and. For a team that's not, or kunyari, in the numbers, Tohen Tex actually has a lower defensive rating. They're not as good as Rain or Shine on defense. So, mm. that, 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 that speed game, that fast-paced game might spell doom for uh, Tohen Tex. Okay, um, here's, here's a, here's a storyline that we need to also tackle. Mm. Um, Coach Yang versus the refs. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think this, is, this is something that... We need to talk about because okay. the entire this entire playoffs playoffs coach Yang has been playing mind games with mm. with refs. He's been getting referees suspended. He's been getting them fined. Mm. Do you feel like somehow this is all going to end up with with uh, Ross being able to get away with a bit more physicality because refs are going to be even more scared of of screwing up and of uh, bad calls. Yeah. Um, Rain or Shine, like I said, they're not a big market team. Mm. So they will take every advantage that they they're can. They're always going to play and the they, underdog role, they, right? they will always play the underdog role. But also, besides that, they'll also try to angle for every advantage that they can. So whether it's a gulang knee, an elbow here, playing the refs, playing mind, game with, playing mind games with the refs, it'll, if it'll give them an advantage to win, mm. then they'll take it. And that's, that's, that's been their mentality repeatedly. Since since Coach Yang took took the helm, so feeling ko it's a smart move actually for Coach Yang Yao to continue to work the refs to continue to you know 
uh, talk about the rest. But you know, on the flip side, you have Ivan Johnson saying yep. stuff like, you know, we won the, we won the, we, despite the, ref. despite the ref. So, <laughs> parang you know, mind games aren't just one-sided terrain or shine. And, and Coach John plays a lot of exactly. mind games then. Yeah. This is going to be a very, very interesting series. Oh, prediction time. Game. Total, mali naman tayo palagi, di ba? <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> mali naman tayo palagi. Kaya tayo ng Boracay to start this uh, season. Which team wins? Why? And in how many games? Um, I got Rain or Shine in seven wow. games. Jason Castro, Ivan Johnson, these guys will... Explode definitely. Tontex, I've said it before. TNT is the most explosive team in the league. Mm. If Jason Castro and Ivan Johnson decide to go at it hard, then they're going to win. But I feel that Rain or Shine, their entire system, going back to resting players, has worked for them. They're fresher. They're better defensively. They have the weapons to be able to match. They have the defensive sloppers to be able to match whoever weapon. Uh, Taon, Texas. So I, I feel that Rainer Shine will pull this out, but in a seven game grueling okay. series. I have Taon, Texas in five games. Five games? Stretch on six. Okay. Six, six. Okay, six. But so, done, five. 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 Six. Five. 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 Be very conservative when it comes to to finals, and I think for me, because the the team that's that's more disciplined, that actually has a system in in place that they can run to, you know, uh, the back of their head without even thinking. I feel like that's the that's the team really that will win a championship. Because if you look at it, Pure Foods won because they knew the triangle intimately, and San Miguel won because. They, they knew, knew that they knew pounded to Junmar and then whatever you can get from Orange. Just stretch the floor. Alaska lost that series because they were relying on on, on their their own brand of NSD. Mm. For me, because it's a text, sure you're gonna have Jason Castro, but Jason Castro is not gonna average 26 points for this entire series. It, it just can't be done against Ross. Mm. That's why I go back to I think that that Rain or Shine has the the best collection of of of, of uh, local talent. Mm. Um, because when you talk about you talked about having the deepest um, team, I think that for talking text, um, they they can get away with um, shortening the rotations because it's only a five game series, so they can get away with playing Castro thirty yeah. minutes, um, Ivan Johnson maybe thirty five to forty because it's a short series lang naman. So if you ask me, the team with the better system, the more uh, disciplined um, system, will win, and for me that's talking text in six. Six. Six games. Six-ish. Six-ish. Yeah. Six-ish. 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 Right now, the biggest stories really are the coaching, Paul Lee versus Jason Castro, and um, the young guns. Yep. Really. Yeah. If you're, if you're a basketball, like if you're just a, a basketball fan, this is going to be a series that uh, it's, it's going to be, I can't wait for it to start. Okay. Um, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll just um, look at the, our Twitter um, notifications, see if there are any questions. Um, another uh, segment of Ask FTS. After the break, you guys are still watching from the stands. What do you think is ailing local football? Well, politics. Should athletes be endorsers? Yes, why not? Why did you refuse to be the Haskell's head coach countless times? I've been there, done that. Too much politics, like I said. Uh, like I posted one time a few days ago, coaching is a thankless job. With what's happening with Michael Weiss, uh, we talked about it already before. Uh, personally, one on one, and I said, it happens. And I said, you should know that because you've worked also somewhere in other countries as well. Uh, there's no such thing as a permanent job in coaching, in any sport. Why do you say thankless? Well, you're only as good as the wins. And then that's it. Uh... Plus, of course, there are other factors like uh, respect, honor, honesty, and all of this. 
because you're just a coach, you're not a manager. Uh, you're not the association, you're not the institution. So you, as a coach, you're just an employee. So you're as good only as, as the wins that you have. I have a question for you. Mm. Uh, when I'm uh, like in my like 40s or 50s, mm. can I get away with having hair like Coach Hanses? Nope. Right now, uh, right now you're barely getting away with the hair that. Good <laughs> day. It's it's ano no? It's uh, locks. Uh, razor yeah. Ramon, eh. diba? Medyo, so, uh, medyo Kevin Nash. Eh. Uh, um, Kevin Nash. Perfect. Like I yeah. wish now when I'm the age of Coach Hans, I can have that kind of hair. Yung ano siya, It's part of his um, image. Okay. It's not good. Let's, let's do a um, mask FTS. You guys have questions. We have opinions. We don't have any answers. Yeah, we don't have answers. It's really just opinions. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll start, Polo. I have one question for you. Okay. If ever Ross can stop Jason Castro in game one, who do you think among the talk and text players should step up? Ardio. Ardio. Ardio is a clear choice. I mean, Ardio is a clear second best player. But the the key there is Kevin Alas, as I said earlier. I think Kevin is it, Alas. Is it scary to be putting so much um, hope on a rookie? On Kevin Alas? Yeah. I don't think he's playing like a rookie, just like Ganuelas Rosser isn't. So uh, these are seasoned rookies. <laughs> Yeah. They're grizzled rookies. Grizzled rookies. <laughs> grizzled They're like Stanley Pringle, not yeah, a rookie. Yeah, yeah. Are not you a really rookie. a rookie? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got one from go. um, Paul Henry. On another topic, who should Kia receive to trade for their first round pick? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, there's been a lot of stories. Floating, and it's been ridiculous stories. It's like, if, if Tohentex decides to part ways with Jason Castro, Kia's okay to part ways with their first round pick. Duh! Duh! <laughs> Or you say, like you trade anyone except yeah, Greg exactly. Slaughter or June yeah. Marfajardo. Come on, man. Yung isa pa is, ano, um, to, Kia doesn't like Melton and Maliari. Maliari, but they're okay if it's James Young. <laughs> Come on. That's the... Parang, eh, perfect to, kasi I wanted to tweet kanina, pero sabi ko, I'll save it na lang for uh, now. Ako oh, nag-tweet na, hindi ko mapigilan eh. Para okay, sige, kung ikaw kaya, ah, I, I, I really think na kung inoferan nyo si Jason Castro, kukunin namin. Mm. Para hindi nila naisip na, teka, si, ano, ano bibigay natin? Sa, oh, diba? Ano bibigay natin? Besides our first round pick, di ba? Our first round pick na, sige, you give, what are they picking? Second or third? Whatever. Second. Oh. Is there anyone player, is there any player there that projects to even have a similar career to Jason Castro? Exactly. It's not happening. Yeah. Di ba? So much as I love Kiefer, it's not even gonna. It's not Kiefer. It's, pro- it's probably Moala Tatua or, or si Bobby Ray Parks. Bobby Ray Parks. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe Parks, but you never know. Castro is a sure thing. He's in his prime. He's only like twenty seven or twenty eight. He's 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 untradeable, diba? So who would you trade? Not not from your team. Just like in the range of players. Range of players who I can get the first pick for. Okay, can we go through the players who you wouldn't trade? Okay, definitely not Junmar. Slaughter. Slaughter, Calvin Nabueva. Oh. Jason Castro, Polly. Really? Wanna trade Calvin for ano? Would you? Didn't for Moala Tatua? Didn't or want... Bobby Ray Parks? <laughs> you picked him on your gilas. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't trade Cal. Sure. Sure na yan. Lucky rin. Lucky rin. Lucky rin. Lucky rin. Uh, okay, uh, would you trade Cliff Hodge? Probably. You would trade Cliff Hodge? 6'7", six, 6'7", six, center. That's physical as hell. Yeah, in Moala Tatua, I, if, if there's a chance to get him, I'd probably trade Cliff Hodge. So, Cliff, okay. Uh, Cliff Hodge level tayo. Okay, so Cliff Hodge level. Um, Mga Marshall Lasseter. You trade Mar- you trade Marshall. I trade yeah. Marshall, I trade lots for that pick. To get, to, for a chance to get yeah? Bobby Ray Parks, yeah. Yeah, yeah ganong ganong level, level siguro. Ganong like, level. Lasseter, lots. Would you trade Norwood to get that pick? <laughs> if there's a chance to get the 6-7, yeah. Moala Tatua. <laughs> yeah, probably. Good, right? Probably. Okay. Probably. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, my next one is uh, okay. Oh, uh, I have I have an interesting one. Go. Um, Ronald Allen France, who's been firing great questions. Um, based on Ross and Tohentek's hot three-point shooting in the semis, where does the corner three go in their game mm. plan? That's a that's a great question. Uh, let's um wait uh. This is an interesting question. Para sa akin, it's more for Ross. It is. It's and you know what? In my research last week, when I was checking out the hotspots of, ano, between the three teams, Tontex, Rain or Shine, and Pure Foods, Ross actually shot 
the best percentage mm. from corner threes. And in that pick and roll setup, it opens up it opens up a lot of shots for guys like Norwood, even Chisim, even if it's not a corner three, mm. if it's just a corner J, it opens up a lot of those corners, especially when Paul Lee is driving. And Paul Lee, eh, sorry, Paul Lee, uh, Jonathan Uiloan does not miss corner threes. Yeah, apparently. So they have three really good corner three shooters. They have Chris Chu, not really good, but I mean they're good. Yeah. Chris Chu, Jeff Chan, Jonathan Uiloan. You have even Paul Lee who can make from the corner. Then even Ryan Aranya sometimes. Yeah. Bo, Bo Belga is not a corner shooter. So talking text naman, he, it's not corner threes. Eh. They, they get a lot of their threes from pick and rolls. Um, whether it's from RDO or from Larry kickouts. Um, or it's just um, Jason Castro isolating uh, at the top of the key. So if you're talking about corner threes, it's definitely going to be a weapon for Ross. Um, and you also have to remember that TNT is a, is a veteran team. Yeah. Kung wala si Ganuelas Ross or si Alas, they're going to have problems chasing after the shooters of Rainer Shine. All right. I have a question here <clears throat> from Coldfire019. Francis says, um, players from your favorite teams that will flourish in other teams. You know what? Let's make this fun. Players from I'll pick a player. F- uh, you pick a player from Alaska that will work with Hinebra. Okay. I'll pick a player from Hinebra that will work with Alaska. Hmm. Game. Aside, pro- aside from the obvious, isn't it? Huh? Aside from the obvious. Or pa- yeah, I mean, Doug, like Greg Slaughter. And okay, Kami Galvin. Uh, uh, okay. Um, Ako oh, para sa'yo, mm. Mac Barakael. Mac Barakael. <laughs> Reunited, then it feels but see, so good. A big wing that can defend, hit the threes. That's, that's a guy for you. What does he play? Three? Three. Sir, three. I'd rather have Chris Ellis. Yes. <laughs> Go. All yours. How come you guys don't like Chris Ellis? Is it because he's not on my team? That's why I look at the positives that he does. No, I just feel that Chris Ellis... Okay, I like Chris Ellis. But if there's a chance to get a shooter for Chris Ellis, I'd give up Chris mm. Ellis. Okay. So that better be a shooter not named RJ Hazul. J- JV Casho would be fantastic for Hinebra. He would. For JV Casho... <laughs> <laughs> JV Casho would be fantastic for Hinebra because JV Casho can hit an open three-point shot. And he can spread the floor because right now if you look at Tinebra, they're just sagging of LA Tenorio. Yeah, but actually. For Carlo. So it's a pure food to Carlo. What what's one player either from Hinebra or or uh, Alaska? Begin at si Tony De La Cruz. Oh sige, akin, uh, bigay ko si Elterbrand. <laughs> Elterbrand. Fair <laughs> diba? No. Because it, they get a veteran they pure food would get a veteran presence. Yeah. And, and then we can get like Malyari and ano uh, yeah, um, and uh, Maliksi. Sanggalang ay kasi sanggalang sa. Oh, sige, sanggalang sayo. Uh, Akin na lang si Manchi. Uh, okay, diba? that's Pwede. it. Good. And then they also have ano, they have a uh, the closer in JJ Helter Brand. Yeah. You know, when he drives to the basket. Bala na no yare. Diba? Pero he has the At guts, to, has the guts the to drive the basket. So we co- I don't think Tim Cohn puts him down in that situation. Yes. So we're calling it JJ for Melton. No, 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 for Maliksi. Mali- for Maliksi and yeah. then uh, Sangalang for Tony De La Cruz. Yep. I think it's a fair trade. It's a good trade. Oh, um, last, uh, last question. Um, okay. Ito, ito, ito. Go ahead, go. Okay. Igcaster um, asks, who do you think the difference maker for the upcoming, upcoming finals is? Um, you talked about in-depth Jason Castro and Polly already, we talked about Ganuelas Rosser. Sinong underrated player sa tingin mong kailangan natin ano? Ako, uh, Rani Del. If Rani Del... That's not underrated. No, 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 but we haven't talked about it. If Rani Del can play an able second fiddle, play pick and pop well alongside Jason Castro, I think that Tontex has a great chance of winning. Oh, Jay Wash. Wow. I think Jay Wash needs to do... Um, Jay Washi things off the bench. So hijack the offense. <laughs> hey, when when things are going anywhere, or when Jason Castro sits. When Jason Castro sits, um, Jay Wash um, has the freedom to do things. Um, I think he's gonna be. He needs to have a moment in this finals. It's been a while since he's been to the finals. <laughs> you know it's not a shot. No, it's not a shot. Jay Wash is my guy. But Jay Wash has gr- has a great man bun. Jay Wash has hair that I wish I could have. Yeah. Like Coach Hans. Um, for Inner Shine. One player who I th- who might be an X factor, I think is ano. Um, we talked about Jericho Cruz, but I think mm. Uiloan, para sa akin. 
No, 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 sorry, let me change it. Uh, Ryan Aranya. Talaga? Ryan Aranya. Actually, Ryan Aranya can give offense in spurts. Yep. Eh. He, he has a sneaky good offensive skill set na sobrang limited, pero it works. Eh. Yeah, yeah, diba? yeah. So, Ryan Aranya has actually taken the mantle of Captain Hawk. He, he's got the floater solid. Diba? Solid. And he has the pink shoes. Yeah. Oh, um, anything else? Oh, ito, ito. Last na to, okay. talaga to. Do you think, Coach, uh, from ano, King Schleck, King do you Schleck? think Coach Yang would shorten his rotation or ubusin nilang niyang fouls para masira sirang laro ni Castro? How physical do you think Coach Yang gets? It's gonna be physical as hell. Right? Ako, I don't think he shortens his rotation because he's going to press a lot. He's going to play ball denial a lot. Because right now, the only way to stop Jason Castro is to deny him the ball. Because when he gets the ball at the top of the key, you don't know if he's going to drive, you mm. don't know if he's going to hit the three. So, play ball denial a lot. Use all the guards, use all the swingmen that you can to defend Jason Castro. I don't think he shortens his rotation. It's really not his style. He's never had, and I don't think it... <laughs> do, you, do you think they double Jason Castro, top of the key? Or, or is, are they going to try to trap him? I, I think Tohentex moves the ball so fluidly that doubling him early it's on gonna be death. it's going to be crazy because you're going to uh. find an open player. So it's going to be ball denial, going to be physical with him as he brings up the ball. I cannot wait for the series. Right? It's going to be a right? lot of fun. It's crazy. I, I'm so glad I didn't stick with my five games. <laughs> because talk and, and, and Rainer Sign is going to be a long, long series that we're going to talk about. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Mm. You said seven games, I said six games. It's only a five-game series. Go the full distance. Okay. Yeah. I'm so glad I was able to correct yeah. it. So, you're, you have Ross in five. Five. I have talk in four. Yeah. Okay. There. That would have been really yeah. embarrassing. Four or five. It's almost on the level of not of not forgetting or remembering Barajo. I'm so used because it's a seven-game series. Yeah. Right? Why did they just make it a seven-game series? Don't you want to watch this for seven games? I want to watch this for seven I games. I don't know what's up with that fight. Although, that's how Alaska won our championship. Yeah. Okay. That's going to do it for this episode of uh, From the Stands. Thank you guys very much um, uh, for, for hanging out with us for our uh, two-man crew. Yeah. Probably by next week, kamakabalik ni si Carlo from Boracay. Or from covering the PBA the Big time. Radio. Big time. 92.3. Ah. Hopefully you can get a guest, said, yeah. guest next week. Yeah, We're yeah, trying maybe. to angle to get a guest to help us, you know, talk about the finals and, you know, just have some okay. fun in this in this. So some, uh, some spring cleaning or just remi- viewing reminders. Our podcast is on iTunes. Yeah. Just search for From the Stands um, to, and subscribe to the NMF uh, feed so that you guys can uh, be updated on our video yep. and audio. Subscribe also to NMF Sports on YouTube. So that you guys will be able to be first in line mm. to see our videos. Yeah. And, and uh, follow yeah. us. On, you wanna uh, leave us a comment, nice yep. or not nice? Violent, Go Colo ahead. underscore Busamante, Chuck underscore Raneta, and Carlo underscore Pamintuan. So on behalf of my, uh, to, the, to the guy on my left, Paulo Busamante, my name is Chuck Araneta. We will see you next week for another episode of From the Stands. Peace! The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised.